Good evening, class. Today what we're looking at is solving right triangles. What we're trying to do is solve a right triangle, which means all we're trying to do is find all the unknown information. So if I'm looking here, it says solve right triangles. The solve right triangle means find all the missing sides and angles to find all the measures. To be able to solve a right triangle, you need either two side lengths of a right triangle or one side length and one ac acute angle measure of a triangle. So let's just look at the two different methods that I have to do here. The first one is one that we sort of did yesterday or the last time you watched the video. It might be the same day for all I know, but most likely yesterday. 15 degrees, 6 feet, J, K, and L. And I'm looking here. Yeah, I'm looking for all the missing pieces of information. Well, let's call this X, Y, and Z. X plus 15 plus 90 equals 180. Mr. H, what did you pull out of your pocket there? Well, all three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So if I'm solving here, X plus 105 equals 180. X is equal to 75. So I found the 75 degrees. Part one done. Now to find Y and Z, choose an angle. I'm going to choose the one I was given here. That's what I'm going to use for both parts here. I'm going to use the ratio twice because, again, if you watch the video, example six, I said rounding. I don't want to do any errors with rounding. So let's use 15 degrees ratio. Now, for the first one, let's look for Y. So this is the one I'm looking for. That's opposite 15, and I have the adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, Soka Toa. Opposite adjacent is O and A. Tangent, tangent of 15 degrees. Opposite is Y, so that goes up on top. Adjacent is 6, that goes on bottom. I'm solving for Y. It's a proportion, remember. Cross multiply. Y equals 6 times tangent of 15 degrees. All right, if you know what you're doing here, yeah, plug this in. You've got it. However, in this case, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head, so let's plug it in. 6 tangent of 15. Y ends up being 1.608 1.608 feet. Now, for F, or sorry, for Z. I still want to use 6, so I want to use adjacent. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so adjacent hypotenuse, A, H. So Katoa, A and H is Ka, so cosine is what I put here. Ka. Adjacent comes first, 6 on top. H comes second, Z on bottom. This is a proportion, remember? Cross multiply. 6 equals Z, cosine of 15. Z is not by itself, so I have to do more work. Divide both sides by cosine of 15. Z equals 6 divided by cosine of 15. And again, unless you really know what you're doing, you're going to need a calculator. So plug in 6 divided by cosine of 15. And you should get z to be 6.2116 feet. So I look over here, 6.212 feet. I rounded differently. And there I go. I've solved this complete triangle, and I'm, honestly, I probably should have boxed the whole thing here because I solved the whole triangle. I've gotten all the side lengths, I've gotten all the angle measures. This is what you do if you're given an angle and a side. Awesome. Now, what if we try a slightly different triangle? One where I'm given two side lengths. Well, let's just give this a shot. So, redraw the triangle because you want to fill in all the information and show me that you can. And if you can, awesome. If you can't, well, there's something we might need to learn. So let's just take a quick look here. All right. So I look. Well, I can find, let's call it X, Y, and Z. I can find Z pretty easy. Pythagorean's theorem. 6 squared plus 12 squared equals Z squared. 36 plus 144 equals Z squared. Z squared equals 180. Z is equal to the square root of 180. And let's see, 180. What number is going to 180 that I know for sure? I think 36 goes into 180. 
I want to say five times. So this is the square root of 36 times the square root of 5. Or z is 6 times the square root of 5. So if I actually plug it in and I get a number here, I get 13.416. All right. So I found the last side, and I'm about to find x and y, and I realize I have two variables. You know, I don't think we've ever found a way to find an angle here. Well, the trigonometric ratios that we have, sine, cosine, and tangent, it's true for any ratio, right? Well, shouldn't I be able to use sine, cosine, and tangent to tell me which angle matches up to a ratio? Yeah, that makes sense. Seeing that the sine, in this case of x, would give me the ratio 12 over 13.416. That ratio is always true for that angle. But I don't know what the angle is. So can't I use sine, cosine, and tangent to find it? Oh well, yeah, but I have to use the opposite, right? Because that's the ratio it gives me. Sine of x would give me the ratio. What if I want the opposite of it, the angle? Well, I have to do the opposite operation. That's just like saying, all right, to get rid of a multiplication, I have to divide. To get rid of a square, I have to square root. It's the opposite operation. On your calculator, just above sine, cosine, tangent, you should see sine, negative 1. Cosine, negative 1. Tangent, negative 1. What these are, are the inverse trigonometric functions. And what they are for, is for finding the angle measurement. So in the case of the triangle up on that screen, what if I wanted to find the measure of angle A? I know each of the ratios, tangent of A, sine of A, cosine of A. Well, the first one, tangent of A. If I want to find the measure of angle A, what I do is I take the tangent inverse of both sides. So if I'm looking real carefully at this picture here, oops, I accidentally went on. If I look real carefully, Tangent of A equals 15 over 20. Well, what if I went down here and I took the tangent inverse of tangent of A? Well, I get the measure of angle A out. Tangent inverse of this would give me a measure of angle A. And that would equal the tangent inverse of 15 over 20. Well, let's just check this real quick. What if I use tangent inverse? So second tan. And I put 15 divided by 20. Mr. H, when he punch, punch, punches this in the calculator, he gets 36.869.9765. Or measurement of an angle real close to 36.9. Mr. H knew this measurement because he used the tangent inverse of the ratio. So you still set up the ratio as normal. Tangent, you still set up that way. And when you set it up that way, what you do next is you take the tangent inverse of the ratio. So up here, if I look here, I want to find x. The way I'm going to find x is I'm going to take the sine inverse of the ratio I set up. And that will give me the angle. Well, what if instead of sine of x, I would have used tangent of x? Tangent of x equals 12 over 6. Well, if I want to find x, I take the tangent inverse of my ratio, and that will give me my angle measurement. So, basically, these inverse trigonometric functions, you set it up normally. Tangent of x equals 12 over 6. Tangent of x is 12 over 6. Yeah, that's, that's true. And once you set it up, I'm trying to find x. Take the tangent inverse of the opposite side, you'll get x. Take the tangent inverse, or sorry, the sine inverse, of the opposite side, you'll get x. Same thing here. If I set it up, sine of a is 15 over 25, then the measure of angle a is sine inverse of 15 over 25. If I set up cosine of a to be 20 over 25, then the measure of angle a is the cosine inverse of 20 over 25. Basically, whichever ratio I set up using here, if I want to find the um, the angle measure, I take the cosine inverse of that ratio. So let's relook at this problem. Solve the right triangle. We've already found z. We already know how to find x. Let's look at this one here. 
Tangent inverse of 12 over 6. Tangent inverse of 12 over 6. Sine, cosine, tangent. So I'm trying to do the tangent inverse. So I hit second. Tan. Tangent inverse now should appear. Tan, negative 1, start parenthesis. 12 divided by 6. Now, this is where you have to be very careful. Because your calculator is sometimes smarter than it should be. If you don't put a closed parenthesis here, sometimes that divide by 6 gets excluded. It gets put outside, and you get a wrong number. So make sure you close parentheses, especially on this here. And now it tells me 63.4349. So this here, x is 63.4 degrees. And because the acute angles of right triangle are complementary, what's 90 minus 63.4? Well, that's going to be 6, 6, 2. So this over here is 26.6 degrees. So yeah, if you don't know the angle, either acute angle, what you have to do is you take a sine, tangent, or cosine here. You set up normally. And then from there, you take the trigonometric inverse, whichever one you decide here to find the angle measurement. Let's take another look at an example here. What if I asked you to find me the measure of angle B? All right, let's redraw the triangle. Now, here's a trained eye. Now, Mr. H shows a very nice, convenient triangle, but trained eye here. The shortest leg is half the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse is twice the shortest leg. The longest leg is the square root of three times the shortest leg. That sounds familiar. In fact, that sounds like a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. In fact, it is. But let's just pretend we didn't see that because we need to practice this trigonometric inverse. I'm looking for this right here. Now, am I given all three sides? Then one, two, three. yeah, I'm given all three. So at this point, it doesn't matter if I use sine, cosine, or tangent. I just have to choose one. Let's choose sine. Well, sine of x. Sine is so. Opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite comes first, so it goes on top. Hypotenuse comes second, so it goes on bottom. 5 over 10. I'm looking for x. Wait a second. It's stuck inside the sine. So x here is equal to the sine inverse of 5 over 10. Now, if you've been looking for an explanation of why this works, let's go into a slight detour. Let's think back to this here. If I have 5a equals 15, how would I solve for a? Well, 5 is multiplying a. So I do the opposite operation. I divide both sides by 5. A would become 3. All right, pretty simple. What if I was solving here? A, sorry, let's do B minus 5 equals 10. Well, the opposite operation would be add 5 to both sides. So B is 15. Well, let's look here. What if I'm trying to solve for X? Well, the opposite operation of sine is sine inverse. So what if I take the sine inverse of both sides and take the sine inverse over here? On this side, I would get sine inverse of 5 over 10. And over here, sine inverse and sine would cancel out. I get x. And that's how I would get this here. So if you've been wondering how that sine inverse gets on the opposite side, this is how Otherwise, if you have x stuck inside of a sine, to get rid of it, just take the sine inverse of the opposite side, and you're done. All right, let's look. x to solve for. Do you know what the sine inverse of 5 over 10 off the top of your head is? Probably not. So, calculator time. Second, sine, 5 divided by 10, close parenthesis, enter. And I am not surprised to find x to be 30. And remember, that's measure of angle B, which is what I was looking for. There we go. That's it. 
Yeah, sine inverse is going to be new. Cosine inverse is going to be new. Tangent inverse is going to be new. But the new part of it is, is if your variable is locked inside of sine, cosine, or tangent. Now what you do is you take the sine inverse of the opposite side, cosine inverse of the opposite side, or the tangent inverse, and you plug it in a calculator. That's it. It's sort of like learning a new operation. Sine, cosine, and tangent are all new operations. And their inverse is just the opposite. It's how you get rid of sine, cosine, or tangent. And there you go. That's how you find an angle measure using two sides of a triangle. Example four. Real life problem. They don't give you a picture. So right away, I know I'm going to be drawing a picture. Let's start reading it. It says, suppose your company is building a ramp for entry into your building. This could be something like you were making it so it's accessible to everyone. An angle of elevation less than 10 degrees is required by state law. I don't actually know what the actual requirement is. I think it's probably closer to 5 or 3 degrees. You know, something more reasonable. But I just chose 10. All right, so triangle, angle of elevation. Triangle, angle of elevation, 10 degrees. I know that it's going to look something like this. You have 25 feet available outside your office. 25 feet available outside your office. Is that the length of the ramp? No, that's how much you have available. That's probably this, 25 feet. And the doorway is 5 feet above the ground. To get to the door up here, it's 5 feet up. And most likely this is the right angle. Unless your building is crooked, which hopefully it isn't. Would a ramp built here satisfy the state requirement? Oh, that's the thing. I don't know if this is 10 degrees. This is actually a question mark. I don't know it. But it's what I'm looking for. If that's 10, does it satisfy? No, it's looking for less than. If it's 5, does it satisfy? Yeah, if it's 12. No. Plug it in. I look, what am I given? Well, I look at X. Make my mark. I'm given the opposite and I'm given the adjacent. So when I'm setting up this problem, I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of my angle, X, equals opposite 5 over adjacent 25. Where's my variable? It's inside here. So, if I'm looking for a variable inside of sine, cosine, or tangent, all I do is I take the sine, cosine, tangent inverse of the opposite side. So x is equal to the tangent inverse of 5 over 25. At this point, it's a calculator problem. No more thinking required. Well, there's a little bit more thinking required. But type it in. So I get tan, 5 divided by 25. Enter. I get, when I plug this in, 11.3099. Degrees. All right, so the question was, would a ramp built here satisfy the state requirement? A ramp built here will not. And there you go. So, yeah, you have to do a little bit more here. If they're asking you to solve the triangle, they want every piece of information. If you don't know an angle, you still set up sine, cosine, tangent the normal way. Figure out what you have. Set it up that way. For instance, here, I chose opposite and adjacent, so I chose tangent. And then when you get tangent of x equals a ratio, you take that x and you take the inverse of whichever trigonometric function you used of the ratio. And you should get an angle up. All right? And that's all I believe I have for you today. Um, this is a tougher section. Try your best. It is new. Uh, but that's all I have. Till next time.